Hi, my name is Yazan. I'm going to teach you how to play Poor Black Maddie in the style of R.L. Burnside. We're going to tune. We'll tune to an open G. Uh, I've got a capo on, but that's what I'm tuned to. And that's D, G, D, G, B, and D. I like to sing it in the key of A, so I put a capo on the second fret. You can do whatever you like, whatever works for your singing. So I've got it tuned to open A now with the capo on. So to begin with, getting the rhythm right is really the essence of playing the song correctly. To do that, I use my feet to keep track of the beat. Using your thumb, strum the fifth, fourth, and third strings. And at the same time, bring your heel down of your open leg, the leg that doesn't have the guitar on it. The way I, I like to break it down is the one note as being your right foot or left foot, and then the second beat would be on the other foot. If you can play the low notes with your thumb and stop at the same time, that would be the first step. add in the two beat. So that you're also using your thumb and you're playing for now the top three strings. You're not fretting anything. This is all open. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And with your other foot, you can tap your foot on the two. Don't worry about anything else with regards to playing the frets or anything. Just start with that basic rhythm. Practice that for a good long while. You can see that I position my hand in a way so that my thumb is sort of parallel with the strings. It's not coming down like this, but my, my wrist is straight with my arm. Once you feel comfortable with that, <clears throat> then it's time to introduce your finger. Play that rhythm that we just did. One, two, one, two, one, two. And then in between every note that you're playing with your thumb, stroke with your finger. One, and, two, and, 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 one, and, two, and. So now you've got to practice this. We can play that a little bit faster and it sounds something like this. Then you can think about muting the, the top two strings. The way I do it is I, I lightly rest my first finger on basically above the first fret. So when you're flicking with your finger that we just introduced on the ands there, in between the thumb notes, you'll get a, a deadened sound. So the, the key to making that, that percussive sound really sound large is to find the right place for your thumb to come down on the strings with quite a, a good amount of pressure. And finding the right spot, usually generally near the end of the fingerboard, where digging in will create a, a loud, clear clicking sound. Something like this. I'm tapping my left foot. You might be tapping your right foot if you're a right-handed guitar player.
what you're really doing there is you're snapping the strings against the fingerboard and you're alternating the sort of pressure of your thumb in those two strokes. That can be a little bit tricky at first. You're hitting gently and then hard, gently and then hard. So the thumb sound on the two note and the flicking up have even kind of volume and resonance. That's what kind of gives the, the song its rhythmic drive and feel. Playing that at speed sounds something like this. practice this technique for a while, it's going to hurt. Your thumb's going to bleed. You're going to develop a serious callus, especially when you're digging in hard. There's no doubt that's the key to the sound. Be ready to sacrifice your own blood for the sound. The rhythm naturally swings a little the way he plays it. So you can introduce that swing <clears throat> once you're comfortable playing it. Because it's dance music, and the whole point is to provide a rhythm for people to dance to. To provide a rhythm for yourself to dance to, actually. Once you've got all that, then it's time to introduce the little lick that he starts off with, which is sliding from the first fret to the third fret on the second string and then playing the third fret on the first string. So you do that, and then you immediately follow it with a down stroke with your thumb, muting the strings. So it sounds something like this. actually starts, you can play it on the one, coming down with your heel, or you could play it a little bit before and slide up so that it's a little bit more playful rhythmically. The second part of that lick is played by your second finger on your fretting hand. You hit the third fret of the fifth string, and then you play the first fret of the second string again. And that's done fairly quickly. So it sounds something like this. You'll notice that R.L. Burnside frets everything with just his first and second fingers on his fretting hand. And he also picks everything with his thumb and first finger. One thing to keep in mind is once you've slid up, you want to quickly return your first finger back to muting those top two strings right there. So again, I'm not pressing down here. I'm just very lightly touching the strings to get that percussive sound. And you want to just use these two fingers for fretting. Uh, it does make a difference than introducing other fingers. It's a different sort of muting sound. So what I'm doing there is start to feel free to move your entire body. I would say that dancing while playing this song, even while you're sitting down, is essential to feeling it. It's dance music, so you want to make sure that you're dancing first. Sped up goes something like this.
after you've learned all the guitar parts, you've got the rhythm down, and you've got the little melodies down, and some variations on it, just remember to sing it. It's a song, and not just a guitar part. And make sure to dance while you're sitting down too, because if you're not making yourself dance, it's going to be even harder to make other people dance. So play it in a way that feels playful and fun to you. It may, it may take some work, but just remember that with enough practice, you'll definitely be able to do it. I'm a bit. 